going on guys and welcome back to the channel Powell Lever here and welcome to the first video of the year 2021 just a quick background for you guys that are new to my channel I am a wedding and portrait photographer and videographer based here on the Chicago area and today we are going to be unboxing the Sony a7R 3 I was shooting with Canon before my first camera was the Canon T6i and I really love that then eventually I upgraded that to the Canon 80D. Now, if you want to watch that, I do also have an unboxing video for that one. You can check it over here. Then when I got to videography more seriously, I upgraded to the Sony A6400, which is what we're shooting right now. And also if you want to watch the unboxing video for that one, I'm going to link it over here. Basically, I was using that for a year and I was happy with it, but I wanted more megapixel. So I've decided to switch over to Sony completely for both photo and video. And today we're going to be unboxing the Sony a7R 3 Let's go. All right guys, so here we are. We are unboxing the Sony a7R 3 Let's get along with it. I'm gonna open this up. Of course, the first thing you're gonna see to register your product, whatever. And then of course you're gonna see your manuals. You have your warranty over here. Yeah, manuals, a lot of manuals. And some more manuals right over there. Okay, set that aside and let's open this. Okay. All right. So let's go with the Thing right over here you got your strap right over there which is okay it just says you know a7 for a sony a7 series i guess comment down below guys if any one of you uses this but for me i actually don't use this but that thing is just gonna stay right over there and you have your battery right over here this is the uh, sony c100 if i'm not mistaken these uh, batteries are actually better than the ones that the C6000 uh, series has. Those batteries are really not good. <laughs> so that's also the reason why I wanted to get this, to move on to the newer batteries. And you got your power cord right over here. And I guess that's it for that side. Let's get on with this side. And this is your charger basically your brick charger that's good uh, that's actually good when i unbox the a6400 they didn't come with any charger and you just have to charge it with the battery in the camera so that was actually um, not a good experience but anyway it's good that they also included the charger with the sony a7r3 what else you have here you have this thing I have no idea what oh I think this is um, I think this is for your cord this actually helps it to not bend and in the long run you know break set that aside right over there all right and then let's get on with the main attraction we have Sony a7 r3 right over here there we go now it is basically wrapped in a nice, um, I don't know, plastic kind of thingy, plastic cloth thingy. I have no idea what you call this, but there you go. And let's unveil the beast. <laughs> All right, here we go. Set that aside. And there you go, guys. This is Sony A7R3. Right over there. Alright, first look. Over there. Let's take a look at the sensor. Make sure it is all good. Put that in the light. Look at that. Full frame sensor. Right over there. Alright, so we've already unboxed the Sony a7R 3 
Now let's talk about the few features that I really like about this camera and the few reasons why I think this is still going to be worth your money buying in the year 2021. You guys are probably going to ask me why I didn't go with the Sony a7R4 and instead I go and went ahead with the Sony a7R3. There's actually a few reasons why I chose this over the Sony a7R4. The first thing is, of course, the budget. The Sony a7R4 is like... So the Sony a7R4 brand new is like 3,498 brand new. And right now the Sony a7R3 is 2,798 brand new. That is one of the reasons why I chose the Sony a7R3 over the a7R4 is budget. I really don't have that much budget for Sony a7R4. But probably in the near future or after I've used this in a lot of gigs and whatnot, I'll probably go and upgrade to that one. But for now, this is going to be my main workhorse in regards to photography. The second reason why I switched to Sony a7R3 and Sony is because of their autofocus. Their autofocus is still the best, I think, in my opinion. Or if not, I think Canon is like catching up to them. It's basically like in their level now. Another reason is because of the 42 megapixels. Um, I wanted to have more megapixels since I do portraitures and of course for weddings. Some of the clients want to print out their photos and um, I know 24 megapixels is basically enough for printing pictures. Also one of the reasons why I didn't go with the Sony a7R4 is the megapixels. It has 64 megapixels and the Sony a7R3 has 42 megapixels. And um, for what I do, I think 42 megapixels is just enough. And the Sony a7R4 with the 64 megapixel, I think that is a little bit over overkill for what I do. Now don't get me wrong, 64 megapixels is it's also good. It really depends on what you do. If you are doing more or if you're doing high-end uh, product photography and you know you need more megapixels if you're printing in magazines or whatnot, then that 64 megapixels is definitely gonna be good for you. But for what I do, 42 megapixels is just enough. It's basically going to be my main photography um, camera, my A cam for camera basically. And then for video, this is going to be either my B cam or A cam um, to the 6400, Sony 6400. That's also the reason why I switch also to Sony, is because I have the Sony 6400 and I have been using this for my video work. And matching your colors with the Sony and the Canon is a pain. It's really hard and it's a pain. So that's why I decided to just you know, go with one system. So I still think the Sony A7R3 is going to be good in the year 2020 and probably two or three more years. So it's gonna be good. So let's go to the specs. Sony A7R3 shoots 4K 30, 24. It shoots 120 um, in 1080p, which is basically what I just need for most of my work. I just need 4K 30, 4K 24, and it shoots um, 120 in 1080p. It also has image stabilization, a 5-axis image stabilization, which is really good if that you have it, knowing that you have it, but it really isn't necessary because um, I do have the 6400. It doesn't have any stabilization, but I do use gimbals for that one, so it's really not a big deal. So that's really all the reasons why I got the Sony A7R 3 I just wanted to use you know, just up my game regarding the photography and um, also on the video side to go along with the 6400, a B cam or sometimes an A cam for the Sony 6400. That's basically all the reasons why I got the Sony A7R 3 All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. It's just a quick unboxing video and mainly just the reasons why I opted to go with the Sony A7R 3 and now with the newer ones. And hopefully someday I do get the Sony A7S 3 or the new A7 IV. And, uh, but for now, I'm really happy with this purchase. You want me to have like a detailed, very in-depth review of the Sony A7R 3 just comment down below and we'll probably have that works on the go. 
Now regarding about the channel, I have a lot of ideas. Basically the channel is just gonna be more related to unboxing videos, talk about, talking about gears, talk about photography and videography. That's basically where this channel is going moving forward in the year 2021. And hopefully when everything gets better, you know, we can go outside, then we can do some more vlogs. Now anyway, that's gonna be it for me. I do plan out to rig this out. Same with the Sony 6400. Watch out for that video because I did rig out my Sony 6400. If you guys did like this video, just give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you guys would be notified if I do upload a new video. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.